Hello and welcome to Teach Me to Code. This is Eric Berry and today I'm going to show you how to create a an admin uh, using uh, nested controllers. Let's first create a uh, uh, simple or a quick Rails app called uh, My Admin and we're going to go into that and let's open it up. So here we go. And in my admin here, uh, the first thing I want to do is create, well, actually, let's get rid of some files we don't need, uh, like public index. And uh, let's create a uh, uh, an authentication real quick. So to do that, I'm going to uh, run uh, script generate nifty authentication and what this uh, does is it's a uh, part of a gem called nifty generators from Ryan Bates and it allows you to uh, quickly create stuff so I use it all the time I highly recommend you looking into it and uh, the URL for it is right here so take a look at it excellent excellent um, tool so now that we have that created uh, let's go in and start our application and take a look at what we have. So if I go to localhost and I go to uh, sessions new, oh, you'll see that it throws an exception. And the reason that does that is because um, Ryan's uh, authentication or uh, uh, nifty authentication generator uh, looks for his nifty layout and you could if you wanted to here let me open up another one so that I can uh, uh, work side by side uh, my admin so what you could do is create a nifty layout and that would add everything you need but what I'm gonna do is I'm going to uh, quickly add a uh, another plugin which I wrote called uh, themes and you can get it by going to github.com slash cavneb slash themes and let me uh, bring this up script plugin install themes and this will add all of the stuff we need to have our themes in place uh, and all we need to do is take this code right here and place it into the application controller so I'm going to do that and uh, now if I start my server up again then I can see that there we go we have our quick uh, theme here this is our slice host theme and uh, I'm missing a logo because I don't have one uh, but you can see right here we do have uh, that set up. Now you're going to notice that when I go to sign up it does uh, have it to where the users aren't found and that's because after I um, after I installed the plugin I didn't run my migration so let's do that real quick start it up again so here we go so if I was to uh, sign up uh, there we go it says it can't find the root URL so and this is often how my programming goes where I slowly hit errors and then I fix them so uh, and we're going to say our root URL will be uh, let's create one real quick script generate uh, controller welcome with an index and we'll have welcome and action be our index. So, all right. Actually, you know what? I'm going to start the server on this one so we don't have to keep on coming back to it. Okay, so I hit refresh. It sends. Actually, it says I already signed up because it didn't redirect properly the first time. So, there we go. We're at our welcome index, and I logged in successfully. There's a lot of stuff right here that we really don't need to see, but um, as you can see, it's already mapped out to where we're logged in, 
and there we go. So what I want to do is I want to create a backdoor for an admin to go in and look at all of the users and edit their accounts or delete them if needed. So uh, to start off with that, I'm going to create a new controller. Uh, Oh, script generate controller admin and in this controller all I want is a, a login and a logout and uh, we're going to add an index here um, just so that we can uh, actually I take it back we don't need that so there we go, we have a login and a logout. And uh, on our login page, we're going to have a very basic form. Um, so let's create login.html.erb. And, and then our subtitle will be to log in. And uh, let's create a form uh, action actually and we can do uh, form tag uh, action is not action I apologize um, I think all I need to do is admin login path and uh, let's see if that works so let me first add the route app dot admin login admin login and okay and while we're here we're going to add the log out path okay so we have those two set up and if I refresh if I go to admin uh, you see yes it does work so we do have our form so where's our form here admin login method post it does work so we have that so what I want to do is create a uh, a simple form here that asks for a username and password F to, I'm sorry, not F text field tag username, and we're gonna give it the value of username here, and then we're going to do the same thing with our password. So here we'll say password, and same thing here. And of course, this is a password field, and this one will be a uh, submit button. Okay, so let's take a look and see how this looks. Good enough for now. Okay, so I have a username and a password, and uh, so now if we were to put whatever in, and log in it does submit to itself so here I want to say if request.post which means it's only going to look at this if it is a post uh, request of course uh, let's set our values username equals params username password equals params password and uh, if username equals and password equals uh, let's uh, let's say that it be logged in successfully uh, and redirect to uh, the admin users path or we're gonna say flash dot now uh, and then pass in uh, invalid username or password please try again and the reason I use slash dot now is because I'm actually not redirecting and when you don't redirect you want to have dot now so it won't 
appear somewhere else in case it does get uh, redirected somehow. So here I'm going to refresh this and send. There we go. It did work with the uh, username uh, test test. Um, but let's say we try something else and it's going to say invalid username. Now this of course is not secure. We don't really in, we don't really want to use this at all. So what we can do is we can uh, again use another uh, Ryan Bates generator and we're going to generate a nifty uh, uh, config file called admin authentication. So what this will do is it creates a couple of files in our config folder. Uh, the first one being the admin authentication config.yaml file and the other one loads it into a uh, variable that's uh, globally accessible called admin authentication config based on our Rails environment. So let's do this. Let's go in and create a uh, username and password on each one. And so this way, uh, and this also you could do, I'm not going to show you how to do it now, but you could have this file off site. And I believe I cover that in my. Uh, uh, securing your data uh, screencast which is uh, earlier on and I'll make reference to it so anyway so now that we have that um, you'll note that when we start our server um, we now have access to this variable so we would do uh, admin authentication config and get the username and you see we'll we'll get that information there so so what we want to do is go back to our admin controller and change this and say to username and uh, password is equal to the admin authentication config password. So that way it's not in the code, it's in the YAML file and you can load the YAML from anywhere. So there we go. So now that we have that we are able to successfully log in. So you'll notice that when we do log in, it does throw that exception. So I log in, we get this exception. Um, actually, I need to, because I uh, used a config file, I need to restart the server. So let me restart that and send, okay, so here we go. Our admin users path doesn't exist. So let's create our uh, admin users, oops wrong one. Script generate controller and this is where the nested controllers come into place. We want to do admin slash users um, and then whatever we're going to have in there so we're going to use index and edit. Now you could also do something like script generate controller admin users which is often what I do because I think it's more readable but you can go either way. So there we go, we did create um, our nested controller here. It's not quite nested yet, um, but you'll see. So we have, in our controllers, we have a new folder called admin. And the reason I like doing it this way is because it does separate out my controllers. I know a lot of you often have very, very long lists of controllers, and I don't like that. I like to have my different sections separated out. So there we go, we have our admin index and edit. So if we refresh here, actually that's not going to work yet. Let's go to routes. And what we need to do is add a namespace. Uh, we're going to call it, it's going to be for admin. I'm going to call it admin and we're going to do admin.resources uh, users. And uh, you'll see now that uh, if I refresh and log in, it does send me into my admin users. And you see we're actually inside the admin. Now for me to know that I'm inside the admin for sure, I'm going to modify my layout a little bit. And in the layout, I'm going to say right here is where our navigation is. And I want to put an additional uh, section in here. So I'm going to move this home into both of those because I don't want that in my admin. So if session I am admin dot blank, 
actually not dot blank but equals uh, yep then I'm going to say uh, link to users and uh, do an admin users path and uh, then I'll also add a logout to this and I'll have this link to admin logout path so if I refresh oh looks like we got uh, an exception here somewhere let's take a look oh uh, right here that needs being else if so refresh here we go home logout that didn't work so and the reason it didn't work is because that's not set so let's go back to our admin controller and we want to be able to know that for certainty we are logged in so I'm going to set a session variable called I am admin to the value of yup so that way when we log in we know we are actually uh, logged in and so knowing that on the logout I'm going to say session I am admin equals nil and yeah I got that wrong here so and uh, flash I'll set the flash variable to me logging out and redirect to admin login path so let's uh, log out here log out doesn't work because we haven't assigned the other one yet so I'm gonna go admin log out and now let's log back in and now here you go you see we have users and we have logout so if I log out it does take us to the logout page but our flash doesn't show up for some reason um, let's try that again log in log out maybe I have it pointing to the wrong place let me uh, double check here uh, admin logout path and on the routes oh that's why we don't have that set up so let's try that again so test test and now log out there we go you've logged out successfully alright so here we are we're logged in we're in the users so let's uh, update a little bit and get this users table looking right um, the first thing I'm going to do is uh, just this is some of the stuff that's part of the themes uh, the themes plugin and also the uh, the nifty layout uh, gem or the nifty layout uh, that Ryan Bates created so I'll do title users and uh, uh, subtitle uh, uh, list of user accounts alright so now you see if I refresh here now we have that so let's go in and we're gonna create a table and let me I've been working on doing this a lot more it's uh, on its command or control shift uh, less than or right bracket whatever you call it and uh, so uh, T head T uh, R T H and on the users I believe we have username and uh, we have uh, email and then we have um, created at and then I always add a actions at the end here and a T body and uh, all right so we're good there so on the users controller on the index I want to populate the users uh, instance variable here with uh, user to all which will load up all of the users into it and we'll go back here to our index and iterate over them so um, uh, users dot h do user and uh, here let me make this a little bigger um, and then uh, okay um, getting there TD uh, and then we're gonna have 
uh, user dot username and yeah uh, uh, I'm not any good at this user dot email and user dot created at dot to string and then we're gonna add our actions in here so let's just say we're gonna have edit and uh, link to delete alright so we refresh here you see we have our our one name okay and we have our edit link and our delete link which neither of them work right now so let's uh, let's finish those up and make that work so we're gonna do edit admin user path and pass in the user and here we're gonna do admin user path pass in the user and the method of delete and we'll throw in a confirm are you sure all right so there a little bit more readable so we have our edit and our delete hit refresh neither of them will work right now because uh, we don't have it tied in yet uh, we do in the routes but we don't have it actually working so if I was to hit edit then uh, oh I guess that does work it does go to the edit page so let's start with the edit page um, and on edit I'm going to do the same thing edit user and subtitle I'm not gonna worry about that I think that'll if I have that yeah it doesn't actually use it so uh, if you don't want to use subtitle just pass in an empty string so um, and on this one I'm gonna just copy the uh, form from the new form under users because that was generated through the uh, through the nifty uh, generator and so I'll do the same thing but you see right here we have form for user because we're in the admin we have to pass in the admin you pass in an array so this is the path that it goes through so we're going through the admin and then to the user so that's the difference between submitting it to slash users slash update uh, versus slash users or slash admin slash users slash update and of course that would be whatever ID it is but you get the you get the point so and uh, let's take out sign up and do update account and uh, hit refresh and what do we got oh you know what I don't think we're passing a user down so let's do user equals user dot find params ID there we go so we have our user account if we submit it it does go to the uh, update uh, action so let's add the update action and uh, so user equals user dot find params ID and then if user dot update attributes uh, params um, user and I gotta say this section right here is probably the most retyped stuff ever in Rails which is annoying and I was gonna use a different plugin or gem uh, to do this but I, I I like knowing what I have in front of me so this is what I do okay so session um, what am I saying uh, not session flash notice updated user account successfully and then redirect to our admin users path else let's render the action edit so there we go so if we uh, refresh this and let's change my name to four B's at the end you see it did update successfully with four B's at the end uh, let's take that off because that's just uh, annoying so all right there we go we have that and we want to add our delete uh, action as well so user equals user dot find um, params ID and uh, user dot destroy and let's uh, add a new notice um, and actually you can do this 
that's probably the quicker way to do it. Um, sure has been destroyed. And redirect to admin users path. So here, let's go ahead and refresh this and delete. Okay. Uh, it looks like it did not like the this delete because that should have been destroy. I apologize. There we go. Should have been destroy. User has been destroyed. All right. So let's uh, now that we have that, uh, let me think if there's anything else we need to cover here. And uh, oh yeah, there is one more thing. So we have our users when you're able to log out, but you'll notice that even though we log out, we can still get to our users. That's not what we want. That defeats the whole point of having it um, have the authentication there. So what I'm going to do is in our admin controller, I'm going to add a before filter authenticate. Uh, and I'm going to add an exception here or an accept. Uh, login. So it's very important you don't have another method or another action within any controller uh, within the admin uh, sub uh, any sub controller within the admin controller called login because if it does then the person can log in without having it authenticate. So uh, I'll explain. Okay, so let's do authenticate and if session I am admin is not equal to yep um, flash notice equals you must be authenticated first sucker um, and then redirect to admin login path. All right, so we have that. And uh, right here, I'm going to do add and return so that there's no chance that it would go anywhere else. Anyway, so there we go. Uh, but that really doesn't help us here. What I want to do is on every sub control, I want to add that before filter, but I don't want to have to call it on everyone. So what I do is uh, instead of having it extend application controller, I have this controller extend admin controller. So every uh, so if I hit refresh now. Let's see here what happened. Well, it looks like it's in a uh, endless loop. Uh, let's find out why. Yeah, I found the problem here. Uh, it's because I can't spell. So there we go. Uh, if we uh, if we do the spelling right, then it does work. Go figure. So let's uh, let's try this again, where we log in and uh, there you go. We see we're logged in. That's fine. Log out try and go to the same uh, same controller here and it doesn't work so there you go I hope uh, I hope you learned some stuff here it's pretty basic but uh, I do appreciate you watching teach me to code uh, just so you know we're always looking for more screencasters and if you are interested in helping out uh, please let me know also uh, we're also looking for sponsors and uh, if you are interested, please send an email to uh, eric at teachbeatacode.com. Thank you. This screencast is sponsored by Jumpstart Lab. Jumpstart Lab offers private and corporate training in Ruby, Rails, and related technologies. They're experienced educators, not just good developers, and will get you going quickly. Courses can be scheduled in the U.S. or around the world, and curriculum customized to meet your needs. Learn more at jumpstartlab.com. That was wonderful. Bravo. I loved that. Oh, it was great. Well, it was pretty good. Well, it wasn't bad. Well, there were parts of it that weren't very good, it though. It could have been a lot better. I didn't really like it. It was pretty terrible. It was bad. It was awful. It was terrible. Get him away. Hey, boo. Boo.